Hi everyone. It looks like it's 4.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I guess it's uh, October 30, 2017. <clears throat> A day before Samhain. Two days before the 500th anniversary of what's known as Reformation Day. Uh, the day it is said that Martin Luther nailed his 95 Thesis to the door at Wittenberg and uh, the chapel or university. It was part of the university. As a challenge, it was actually that um, it was it was meant to be a a theological challenge. I've I've read the ninety five thesis. Unfortunately, a lot of what's in the ninety five thesis, in my opinion, is a lot of intellectual rhetoric and highfalutin theological terminology, which uh, I guess I won't necessarily hold that to Luther's account since the people who he was challenging were the highfalutin intellectuals of the time, people who taught in these Roman Catholic universities. So I guess we can't necessarily fault him for that. If I were to have a discussion at some point in time with, say, a James White, like White did uh, uh, some time ago when he invited uh, Raka Shear onto his uh, radio program, The Dividing Line, and uh, well, that's a whole other topic right there. I did make a video on that because... Uh, Oh, I thought that the topics that were picked to be discussed or debated over were very good, very important topics. And I don't know 100% whether or not James White chose somebody who he knew that he could um, run circles around just as far as intellectual and... <sighs> debate tactics and um, I mean look anybody you know like him or dislike him James White is one of the most proficient debaters that there is in the public eye as far as uh, the whole realm of reform theology goes so uh, but anyways that's so if I was if I was speaking to him um, I'd want to know his language. And to a certain degree, I would be using his language when we talked or if we debated. Um, so yeah, this time of year, watch your children, keep them close. Because this is one of those times of the year when Unfortunately, people end up missing. This and the time around Christmas, and there's another time of the year in, uh, in the summer and spring. I don't know if they keep with equinoxes and solstices as their high pagan holy days, but there are really a lot of people who engage in acts too despicable to spend too much time thinking about, other than to warn all of you out there who might for some reason think that these things don't exist or don't go on anymore. That's just simply not the case. 
so today um it's this is not entirely off the cuff it's somewhat extemporaneous but uh i don't know exactly what things i'm going to say this was precipitated by two different things in two different fields of thought and maybe i'll be able to talk about both of them and um there's a good reason to, to talk about both of them. Um, the first one, which I thought maybe I could get the first one out of the way more quickly, is that uh, a few days ago, it was actually the Sabbath, this last Sabbath. And yes, I, me and my household do observe a Friday evening to Saturday evening Sabbath. Now, a lot of you out there would probably say, well, that's not... That's not the correct way to do it, and uh, you've got to gauge things uh, by the moon. And, um, you know, we don't know what they've done to the calendar, the Gregorian calendar, international date line. Who knows when the Saturday, the Sunday, or anything else. Okay, I feel you. But the thing is, I spent nearly a year just poring over the word to first find out whether or not the fourth commandment was still active and effective or not. And, you know, maybe that's because I'm slow. I don't know. But I, I was not willing to bring into my house a, a rule... I suppose, yeah, a rule, unless I knew for sure that this is good and why it's good. And I've spoken a lot of times in the past then about the Sabbath and why the Sabbath is good to observe, as in the fourth commandment. Um, you can watch the, the videos I did, and in, in <clears throat> it was a, a critique of the videos that uh, Anthony Buzzard and J. Dan Gilded concerning the Sabbath. Obviously, from the dialogue, when you listen to them, you can tell that Anthony Buzzard was probably involved uh, with some form of uh, Church of God, Armstrongism type Church of God, or one, one of the splinters or branches. Um, not Seventh day Adventists, I would say. And, um, and then he got out of that and, and swung very hard in the other direction. And, and my observation and all of that would be because that's what people often do when they, they get out of very nasty uh, <laughs> denominations that like Armstrongism. Herbert Armstrong has some very good ideas about things, by the way. But he and his successors being very horrible shepherds they do not take care of their sheep they they squeeze their sheep they wring them out for not only their money um but their obedience unwavering obedience to them and it's like that way in many denominations Armstrongism and and uh, Church of God, Worldwide Church of God, and splinters from that, they're not alone. Come on. It's, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. Because our shepherds, like the shepherds in Isaiah's day, in Jeremiah's day, are, as Yahweh describes, are sleepy dogs. In general. That's what they are. And because of that, it makes it a very difficult time for, for everybody. Ay, 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 our, our shepherds aren't leaders, I'll tell you that. They're, they're not real shepherds. They're contract shepherds. It's To them, it's a job. It's a career. Pastors, pensions, it's a career.
people who stake their career on things like that, the contracts that, that really just mimic uh, the same sort of contracts and agreements that the world has, they can't be trusted to provide you with uh, the truth. Sorry. And that, now that brings me around to on the Sabbath. I was reading forward in More Than Conquerors. <clears throat> Because now that I had spent that uh, that large amount of time in Hendrickson's assessment of the seven churches, which of course he says is uh, it's even unarguable to say that they're church ages, and then he goes on to spiritualize them all, and uh, I gave him the benefit of the doubt because from the moment I, I heard about this idea from Earl Jones, I thought that idea is worth a look. And I, I did take a look. And I can tell you this, that it's possible. I'm not going to tell you it's 100% that it's proven, but it's possible that you can look at the book of Revelation as the, the same story or, or let's just say, um, essentially the same time period or, or dispensation covered in seven different ways, uh, each one emphasizing different aspects and uh, progressing in a sense as it goes. I think that that's completely viable theory and that that theory should be perused. The problem is, as I've told you before, so uh, so I work a job. I have my own business. I have my own business that has uh, a couple of employees I've been able to hire because I can't do it all myself anymore. Um, we do carpentry. And I support my family. I don't co-support my family with my wife, although she does work on Sunday evening. Uh, mostly, I think, just to get her away from the house. And then my son and I spend that, that time together. But <clears throat> I support my family. It's my job. So I don't have, I don't have nearly the time I, I would like. And with our son being the age that he is, just past two, um, you know, there's not a lot of peace and quiet around. Because, you know, we've got, some, we got a two-year-old. So I don't have as much time to uh, thoroughly read and examine and highlight and dissect and uh, make presentations on any particular works. I, I simply don't do it. So why do I continue to make videos if I don't have the time to do things like that? Well, this is why. Because although I am not as smart or sharp or witty or as well versed or as well studied as many 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 other people i have one trait that for a long time i, I didn't realize that this was um, a a good very good character trait and and a strength and strengths should always be um should always be emphasized in everybody everybody's strengths for sure and um, then their weaknesses, I think, should also be pointed out so that they can be worked on. One of my biggest weaknesses, of course, is I have trouble with uh, constant ums and uhs. And I hear that. I notice that. And I've, I've tried to work on it and other things. But uh, the strength that I have is the fact that I'm not willing to compromise between truth and error not even not even a little bit i have such a passion for what is true what is right goodness purity that you'll see it if um it, <laughs> A good illustration of it is to go a few weeks back when I was 
just getting into the seven churches of Revelation, and I was being driven crazy by all of the dialogue within Hendrickson's book that was all, uh, sorry, Reformed Theology. That was driving me nuts. Because Reformed Theology doesn't work as a system. Dispensational Futurism doesn't work as a system. Christian identity as a system full of dogmas doesn't work. None of these systems works. They all compromise something. As far as the truth goes, they all kick bits of information underneath the rug when nobody's looking. Now, some of them do that on purpose because they just can't deal with it. And a lot of them know that they're not going to make the kind of living that they want to make off preaching the word if they come off like they, they, they're not sure. They don't know. <clears throat> they know for a fact people are far more likely to give their financial support to people who at least act like they've got it all together, that at least act like they've got all the answers. Act the part, and people will believe it. That makes me sick. Even the idea. Even if they're not soaking people for their money, which mostly they are. Mostly they are. But even if they weren't. There's plenty of them out there in, uh, uh, let's say, on the, the lower portions of today's church pyramid that aren't really receiving any kind of financial uh, compensation for the work that they put in to teaching Sunday school or, or running a weeknight Bible study. What they feed off of is that sort of respect they get. Power. Power is a very intoxicating drug. So people have a lot of reasons to act the part. I have the answers. You see, I have the truth right here. And I know how to rightly divide it. I've got my systems in place. I've got outlines. I've got my answers prepared ahead of time. And I don't know how many people stop to think how damaging it can be to pretend that you have the answers for something that you don't have the answers for. You know, I've done it myself in, in ignorance, thinking that I had those answers. Uh, I very well understood something, and I hadn't really done the work to know whether or not that answer was true. I went along with covenant theology for a very long time. And one of the tenets of covenant theology is that the church has replaced Israel. Before that, I was just taught dispensational theology, which is that there is the church and there is Israel. There are two different peoples of uh, Yahweh, and the thing is that the Israel of God are the so-called Jewish gangsters occupying Palestine, murderous, uh, usurious people. 
and both of those systems have their errors but nobody's budging they keep teaching them and I just don't know if I'm willing to believe anymore that these people that are pushing these things they don't come face to face with those texts that tell them this isn't this isn't quite right this isn't quite right you should reassess <clears throat> And then they think, if I start reassessing, who knows what could happen to my status and to my salary. That's the very reason why many preachers don't preach what they ought to preach. And I'll tell you something else. And you probably, maybe a lot of people that probably listen to me and probably think that maybe I'm kind of a flatliner, you know, don't have much emotion or, or anything, because most of the time, you know, I keep it pretty low and pretty monotone and that's because I we don't have a huge house and my wife and son are typically sleeping in the next room about 20 feet away or so so I do my best to, to keep things pretty you know on the on the down low but after reading ahead in, in Hendrickson's More Than Conquerors? I can't with good conscience keep reading that book. It's so full of poison. And here's the thing. I thought from uh, skimming it and what I had heard about it from Earl Jones, and then without having skimmed the book, I went to Revelation. I started doing some poking around, and I saw for myself, you know what, this is a theory that actually could possibly be argued and proven. And that's why I got the book. And you know what he spends most of the time doing in this book? Seriously, he spends most of the time pushing his, pushing his reform theology rhetoric and inserting so much unnecessary material because he probably thinks so much of what he has to say about things. And isn't, isn't that a, a common thing everybody seems to do? I'm guilty of it. I can't continue with more than conquerors because if I do I will either become so incensed and unbearable as I'm trying to read it or I've got to live with my conscience telling me every day you know I I know you're sticking this out because you don't want people to think that you start strong and don't finish. And that's why I kept reading it. After I saw all of, all of this uh, Calvin College reformist rhetoric, all of these things that he was teaching that I'm absolutely against, I am against uh, the Catholic Trinity. I am against the Catholic doctrine of eternal conscious torment and hell. Why? Because they're not in the Bible. That's why. And I'm against all kinds of other things that he teaches, which is really just Catholic, because the Reformers, they taught mostly Catholic doctrine. They only departed in some certain ways. And I'm not saying they were insignificant, all right? Drawing a line in the sand between grace and... Um, approved sanctioned works by the Roman Catholic Church they tell you that that'll get you and earn you salvation that's a big line in the sand that needs to be drawn but if you want to put the weight of uh, every possible way that they departed from Roman Catholic doctrine on, on one side of the scale and then you put on the other side of the scale all of the Roman Catholic poison that they held on to and kept teaching and, and continues to be taught today. That Roman Catholic doctrine tips the scale hard in its favor. Don't let anybody tell you any, otherwise just because they want to defend their system, their status, their position. 
Maybe because they want to feel better about themselves. Maybe they want to feel better about making 60, 80,000 a year off teaching stuff that they know that they know that oftentimes these things they can't prove. They know that it's often full of contradictions. They have little by little severed away their conscience in lieu of gold and silver. And you know how I know that? Because the people who are filled with the Spirit of Christ, that's the Spirit of Truth, they can't continue to teach errors. They can't. It's not in them. They may for a little while, but they're going to be so miserable that eventually they're going to break. They're going to break and they're going to have to stop. And their whole life is going to go all topsy-turvy on them. That's what really happens when people have the Spirit of Christ in them. <clears throat> so I'm not continuing with it. Any of you who subscribed because you thought that was a great book, or I'm sorry, but I'm not. I want you know I I want to look more at that theory of his. I will probably scan his book and find all of the stronger arguments I can find for it, and then put that in light of what I know about Revelation. But you know I'll be honest with you. I was enjoying more a lot of the things that I was coming across in my study of the original Hebrew. It's not perfect. The study I'm doing, it's not perfect. It's not entirely complete. And I told everybody a few videos that I know, I, I know now and I understand that there is going to be a certain amount of of Masoretic Nikudot that I'm going to have to learn because uh, there certainly seems to be plenty of evidence that they have removed characters from the Bible in lieu of their Nikudot point dot dash system. And that stinks because that just complicates things. But the, think about it. The prize in all of this, the reward, is the truth, the real deal truth. It's there. Oftentimes the truth can be a, a very elusive thing. That's true, but it's there. That's what makes it worth it. That's what makes getting up hours before I even have to get ready for work and studying these things, worth it. Sometimes, I'm not kidding you, I've had more mornings than I can count where I've been tired by the time, by the time it's ready for me to you know, get ready for work and get going. I'm tired, man. I, like I need a nap. And I come home from work and have dinner right away and uh, I try to stay up to spend time with my son talk to my wife and everything and it's tough you don't have to have sympathy on me don't have pity on me I do these things because I know that the reward is great there are rewards don't ever don't ever let anybody tell you there's not there's rewards for doing right for doing good for hungering and thirsting, for righteousness, for knowledge, truth. That's right, there's rewards. So, don't feel sorry for me. But I'm telling you, this is what I do because it's, it's all worth it. It's all worth it. This life is temporary. Everybody's is going to eventually end in this particular form of life. The next thing is the judgment. So, hey, I'll lose some sleep. Certain aspects of my life will, in air quotes, suffer. 
But the rewards, the rewards, the rewards are going to be worth it. So that's where I'm at with, with the book and what I've been talking about and the fact that I'm just not willing to do it anymore. I'm not willing to wade through that, that cesspit uh, just to get little, little nuggets here and there of, of stuff that really, you know, I can spend some time going through and scanning and gleaning this stuff and present it as I go, as I have time, as the spirit moves me. I'm much happier doing that. I think I'm far more productive. So that's that as far as the theological end of things. Okay, and now the next thing. The second thing that precipitated this video. <clears throat> I'm going to talk probably at length about not only the static plane that I believe we live on, yeah, and I know that not all my listeners believe that. That's okay. I've received emails, messages, links from listeners who very much disagree. I look over the information. I consider the information. My mind's not closed. Uh, but I can say at this point in time, I've put enough time in to investigating where we live to tell you that... I have found absolutely no conclusive evidence that we live on a ball that moves. None. So that's where I'm at. Now I'm making this video because I've just had too many thoughts in my head the last few days because of things that are going on right now in social media. And a lot of you, uh, you know what's going on because a lot of you are uh, and here comes the term flat earthers. And maybe that, maybe that needs to be changed right away. I'm not dictating anything, but you know, it, here's the thing. It, you look back on it and I can, I can look back on it back to the summer of 2015. That's, that's when I started coming around to this. And it's the very people that right now are being, uh, it, it would seem, uh, being more and more exposed as, as disingenuous. It was these people that I heard these things from first, for the most part. Fortunately, there was a lot of other people that came along too, uh, some at the same time, some afterwards, that had good information, good questions, that still do. And so I got to talk about this because of, of some things that are going on. Uh, now, some people, uh, some people might say, well, it's just, it's just drama. Well, I mean, life's dramatic. A lack of drama to life is really a lack of, of life. Life's dramatic. Read the story of Yeshua, Jesus, his passion, what he did with even just the last week of his life. That's drama. That was dramatic. So, drama, unfortunately, is oftentimes given a negative connotation instead of the... Uh, the, the denotation it should be given. Drama is a, uh, a natural part of life, especially when there is a struggle between right and wrong, truth and error, good and evil. That's dramatic. So recently, a few people have started making videos in which they are... I suppose they're, they're offering information that would seem to implicate uh, a man known as Mark Sargent and I'm assuming a woman 
named Patricia Steer. As not who they say they are. And this is not just out of the blue. This has been building. This has been coming down the pike for a while. <clears throat> it's just that at this point in time, it's becoming less and less people that are in this thing I suppose they want to call a flat earth community. I guess there's less people that are able to continue ignoring this stuff or that choose to ignore it. ODD recently made a video uh, about this, about who is Mark Sargent really, who's Patricia Steer really. Relatively recently, Antonio Antonio Suberatz did a hangout. It was pretty long, and he split it into two parts with uh, a guy named A4. Now, I couldn't find A4's channel uh, unless I did, and he just doesn't have many videos or subs. I'm not sure. A lot of it <clears throat> was... Uh, Antonio trying to clear the air concerning this whole fiasco with Patricia Steer some time ago. This all happened after some sort of a flat earth meetup, the first kind of big one. Uh, and yeah, that is a lot of drama, personal drama. And it, it turned into something that uh, consisted of rape allegations and just a lot of stuff that uh, really have nothing to do with researching the nature of the earth that we live in or upon. It's stuff that I don't know if it's very necessary, but the thing is, if uh, you watch the two videos that uh, Subarats did, something like Flat Earth at War, Part 1 and Part 2, <clears throat> you do have to spend a lot of time um, hearing him talk about these allegations made against him and vindicating himself. Now, if I was alleged by anyone um, that I had raped them, and, uh, and, and it was alleged on social media, I would put time into proving that to be incorrect, a farce. Rape is a very serious accusation, very serious indeed. So I've got no qualms with him trying to clear the air and clear his name. I'm not saying I've got the answers to what happened. I'm saying I've watched, I've listened to things, I've started forming my own opinions and my own assessments of these things. So you have guys like ODD. You have other channels now that are following up on this. Uh, you have Matt Boylan's, the NASA, NASA channel that... Um, I don't know if he started this or not, this whole thing about um, Mark Sargent in particular. And um, I suppose uh, Patricia Steer, for one thing, is, uh, I guess, seen as uh, guilty by association. But believe me, she's got her own uh, mountain of baggage, too. And it's not just them. Um, there have been a lot of people. Uh, implicated. And if you listen to Subarat's conversation with A4, his name is Adam, he tells you about when he got into this idea of Earth not being a globe, uh, Earth being a static plane. It's a static plane. Maybe static plane is, is better than flat Earth. I don't know yet. But uh, he he talks about actually being... Um, 
in a sense, pre-qualified as a shill by these very people right out of the gate. He explains these things, and it's very interesting. Now, he also says, when, when he talks about the, the, the people that he first listened to that, that got him thinking about the nature, the shape uh, of Earth, one of the first people that he does mention is Matt Boylan, who uh, goes by Math Powerland. Now, I, I've never been a fan of, of self-adopted um, sensational nicknames. I'm sorry. I, I, I like people's name. Your parents named you this. My parents named me Jonathan. I go by John a lot, but uh, that's what I'm going to call you, Matt. I, I looked at his channel. I mean, he had content concerning Flat Earth years before I was hearing anything from Eric Dubay. Um, <clears throat> Paul Michael Bales produced content concerning uh, the Earth, dinosaurs, and things like that far before a lot of these other guys came along and pr were producing content like that, specifically Eric Dubay. And I'm going to talk about Eric Dubay. I'm going to talk about a lot of the people who were the big names in so-called Flat Earth from early on. And when w was it a controlled rollout? I don't know. Maybe. Anybody can check my older videos from more than a year ago when I said that I think it's quite possible that flat earth is a psyop, not because the earth is not flat or not moving. No, absolutely not. I said I believe it may be a psyop for that very reason and a distraction for that very reason because it's static and not a ball. So it may be a rollout. And uh, <laughs> you got to give me some patience. I actually have to, to look up what these terms mean because I don't know them. I have no idea. A lot of these terms that people use on social media, that people come up with, and you know, I, I don't know what they're talking about. It took me a long time to figure out well, what is a sock puppet, what's a meat puppet, what's a shill, what's a troll, because... In, in my vocabulary, in the real world, a shill was a different thing. A, a shill was part of an elaborate con. They played a role in a con. Uh, these days, in social media, shill is used in a very different way. I'm a big believer in words meaning something. So when you change the way that uh, a word you change its definition, that really throws me and it takes me some time. That's why I don't use the word shill very often because that's not necessarily its true meaning. It's been given a new meaning. So besides those things going on, Jake Gibson, known as the Flat Earth a blank blank hole and uh, I'm not here acting all pious telling you that I never cuss I mean I I cuss a lot if I hit my hand with something or if I'm extremely frustrated over something I do uh, I'm not all that pleased with it and I'd rather my my speech was was kept um, as clean as I can, and, and for in as much as I have control of myself, I do try to. Okay, so I'm not acting uh, Mr. Super Pious, uh, but I'm trying to tell you that I don't want to celebrate my errors at the same time either. So, most of you people know I'm talking about the Flat Earth a hole. He recently made a video or two about the AE map. And uh, Jake was livid about the things that he had found out. I, I personally can understand his anger and his frustration after watching videos of his for a long time now because I have appreciated the fact that he, more than most, will take these popular 
memes by heliocentric uh, globe model pushers and will critique and criticize them. Um, yeah, he has his own flair. Yes, he uses a lot of vulgarity. He really does. I mean, it's definitely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want the kids watching. Because I wouldn't want them to see that as acceptable behavior. But I absolutely have to, to give it to him that <laughs> the videos he's done and the time that he's been making um, flat earth videos. And I remember some of the very early ones of his. It basically looked like he was up in the middle of the night baked on pot. <laughs> And I don't mean to laugh, it just, uh, and just asking questions, which is usually how it starts. So I've actually appreciated uh, a lot of what he's done, but the thing is, in most of his videos, he is using the AE map as his standard. And he came to realize with a clarity when he was doing uh, a video versus cool hard logic which who even knows who cool hard logic is I'm, they're not a specific user uh, to me cool hard logic seems more like a group or faction dedicated to absolutely demolishing people's ideas about flat earth because what they do and this is very very brilliant you gotta give this to them they come along and they establish a false narrative they get people very much committed to that false narrative to that false model a model that has a whole lot of problems and then they come along and absolutely demolish it. And for a lot of people, that tends to really um, shake the foundations of their beliefs. It will dishearten a lot of people. A lot of people will abandon this idea, which is a good idea, and it's more than an idea, okay? Science. This is good science. The earth not moving is good science. And why do I say that? I say that because all of the tests that were conducted by people who were heliocentrists to show the movements of the earth showed the opposite. It was such a farce. It became such a farce after experiment, after experiment, after experiment, not by flat earthers, by heliocentrists that could not show the earth was moving, that they had to come along and roll out general and special relativity just to deal with it. Which, in the words, and I'm probably going to paraphrase, but in the words of Nikola Tesla, is... A magnificent garb. It's, um, it's a beggar dressed up in, in royal garments. That's what it is. Same with Principia. And, and I don't know that Newton was ever, ever trying to say that this idea of the theory of gravity was anything more than a theory. When you start out a book or a work or a paper or a theory with the word if. That should tell you something. So recently, Jake made a few videos where he very angrily showed that this idea of a circling sun around a circular map 
has issues. And it does have issues. Now, the work of some people, and I'm talking about people who are very bright, who know math, who know the movement of the stars, who understand and track the movements of the sun and of the moon. They have made some observations, especially atmospheric observations, that have kept me at a point where <clears throat> I'm not going to commit to saying that a circular or somewhat elliptical map is an impossibility. The reason for that being that there's so much concerning what we don't know about the sun and where the sun's position seems to be depending on where you are. I've seen videos of people sending up balloons in Scandinavia and those balloons recording what looks to be a local sun. And up in Scandinavia, them seeing a sun that looks to be just as local as us in North America or people in South America, Africa, Australia. <clears throat> Jake pointed out from witnesses in Australia, in Tasmania, that at the same time that us in what is called the Northern Hemisphere, are seeing the sun set in the southwest, they, who are said to be in the southern hemisphere, and we're talking about Australia, Tasmania, South Africa, Santiago, they're seeing the sun set angularly in the southwest. That is a big problem for a circling sun on a circling map. It really is. And as he pointed out in the last video he made, where it, the video was called, uh, you know, he answers questions, okay? Something that he pointed out was this, and I, I agree with these things. Do I agree with his approach? Do I agree with his methods? Maybe not. But I'm afraid that that's more secondary. As far as the pure information or why he would be attacking the model, I do agree with why he's doing that. This whole idea of unity, 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 that's the kind of thing that people who don't want people out there thinking way outside of the box, that's the kind of rhetoric they push. It's better for the community to just go along with this. It's better for the movement to go along with this. It's groupthink, folks. It's groupthink. Groupthink keeps people enslaved and blind. Why is that? It's this whole idea that the what is better for the group is more important than what is good for the individual. That is a logical fallacy. That is supposing that the group is its own entity and that it is more important than the individual. And I hope more of you than just myself are catching on to the fact that that mentality is, has been being <clears throat> woven into the flat earth narrative for quite some time now. This group think mentality. Group think is a logical fallacy in, in the sense that treating the group as if it were an organism in, in and of itself and that this organism had more rights than the individual, that the individual ought to defer to the group, okay? The group is an abstract idea. It is an abstract concept. It is people 
It is individuals who repeat this rhetoric about the group, the group. You should be doing this for the group and that for the group because the group is greater than you. Well, let's suppose for a minute that they had a point about the group being greater. Is it more important for the group to let errors slide, to let things that may be hurting the group more than helping? to let those things go for the sake of what? A peace built on a lie. That's never a noble cause, ever. <clears throat> it's the same kind of mentality where if you are bringing up questions at, say, a Sunday school, and you're making uh, the pastor look inept, which they often are, and you're confusing the whole group of people that are there, and you're making them feel very uncomfortable and unstable, and you're challenging their beliefs. Sometimes maybe you're asking questions or making statements that is, is shaking the very foundations of their faith and people want why do you have to why do you have to bring up these things these questions make these statements that are so detrimental to the peace of the group and that's what it all comes down to why are you rocking the boat don't you see that your rocking the boat is making people afraid why don't you just sit still? Be quiet. We've got this. We've got this. We were around from the early days. We've made very good videos. We've gone on major talk shows. We've been the ones out there really promoting Flat Earth for the good of the community. So, why don't you just let us keep doing what we do because what we do is for the good of the community and you know we keep peace and love in this community and these outbursts of yours they're just unacceptable how can someone let their emotions run away with them over something as trivial as the truth, as a foundational, fundamental truth, like whether or not the sun does circles. What does it, what does it really matter that we believe that? I mean, forget, let's just let's put it in the, the background let's not even think about the fact that one of us may be asked onto a a, a show or a debate uh, maybe uh, and probably more than likely a very uneven uh, very aggressive debate like what happened with John the Morgyle on the Art Bell show and I'm, I'm not saying anything against how John did on that. I thought he did very well. And he went into a den of wolves. But um, let's say that, that one of us gets asked on a, a, a debate that's, that's actually going to be publicized real well. And, and this is the point that Jake actually made in his last video. And I agree with it also. <clears throat> and one of us goes in there with faulty information concerning the movement of the sun, concerning whether or not Antarctica experiences uh, the midnight sun like the Arctic.
concerning whether or not certain constellations exist, or whether some act in the same way as like the North Star, whether or not the Southern Cross exists. Let's say that a very, very bright person in the community of Flat Earth goes on some popular show to debate. And they go in there equipped with the wrong model, the wrong science. And I'm going to call it science, but if it's wrong, it's not really science. It's misinformation. It's disinformation. And it's true. They could send one of their actors like um, Neil deGrasse or, or Bill Nye or a number of people. They could send them in there and make that model look ridiculous and make the whole community, which all these people are saying that, you know, that is what people like Jake or Subarats or anyone else really, who's voicing their own opinion, that they should be thinking more about the community. Well, that sort of thing right there is going to absolutely devastate the community. It is. Let's just use our heads for a minute and think about this. So, whether or not you like his style, whether or not you like his name, whether or not you like uh, all of the language he uses, he absolutely has a point. And there's other things that he's brought up in the last few videos that I have to say, yeah, I've noticed that, and I agree. Now, right after that, and yeah, it's drama, I'm afraid so. Now, right after that, this guy named D. Marble. Yeah, I don't know where he came from, but... Um, Again, I haven't paid that much attention to Flat Earth for, for a while. I'll watch certain content creators that I know are, are very intelligent, that are, are putting some good thought and oftentimes original thought into this. But for the most part, no. Uh, no, I stay away from these, these eight-man community hangouts, especially because they keep having these same faces in them that I don't want to see and people I don't want to hear from. This D. Marble uh, made a video uh, in response to some of the things Jake said because Jake said on that last video he made that uh, for one thing that happened when he came out hard against the AE map and people had to know that he was going to do that. That's, that's his style. It's been his style from the start. People liked that. People, people loved that. When he was pushing the popular model, popular narrative. But now that he's seen some things that he's got a problem with. And he's voicing it. Now they've got a problem. Well, so this, uh, now this D marble. He makes a video in response to Jake. And, of course, he makes a lot of allusions to maybe him being a shell. And you can watch that video as well, and you can make up your mind. I stopped trying to figure out definitively who was a shell a long time ago. I don't have the time. I don't have the resources. I don't have the um, computer prowess to to do this kind of digging that it seems like a lot of other people do I don't have it all I can do is pay attention to what people are doing on the surface and saying on the surface and how they're acting on the surface and then I've got to just decide at that point whether or not to keep allowing what they have to say into my ears to affect my thoughts and my emotions and I got to tell you, there's been a lot of people over the last, it's over two years now, that I have been looking into this, thinking about it, and getting further down the road with this idea of where we live. There's been a lot of people that I've had to tune out. 
either because I consciously see problems with the way they behave or certain little ideas that they push. In It's just like the Hendrickson book, right? He has got a very good theory that I think needs to be perused. But what happens is, in the meantime, between proving the points of his theory, he fills up the pages of his book with all kinds of Reformed theology, Calvinistic rhetoric. And that right there is the poison in the water. And that's all a lot of these people have to do. Do I think all of them are doing it purposely? I don't know. I don't know. But when you listen to some of the stuff that people who have had the time and inclination and far more talents than I do to look into things, who have been looking at patterns for many years in the flat earth community, and they start pointing out some problems with associations and behaviors of the big names. Well, you can decide. You can make those decisions. A lot of the times, I'm simply led by the Holy Spirit to not listen to certain people. To keep what I take in at certain bare minimums. And I have to go with that. And I honestly did second-guess myself from the start with a lot of people. I really did. I don't know. I don't know if it's just a naivete, if it's just a, a programming that we receive, you know, usually from a, a young age, um, where either we feel uncomfortable with just a, a total, full frontal, overt questioning and assault on authority or perceived authority, or whether it's, or whether it is just a naivete in wanting to give people the benefit of the doubt. And I've done this a lot throughout my life, wanting to give people the benefit of the doubt. And I'm honestly at a place right now where I give very, very, very few people the benefit of the doubt. I don't expect people to give me the benefit of the doubt. I just had a person comment on that old video where I critiqued uh, the impromptu debate between James White and Rocky Shear, and I said in that video that early Christians in probably the first, second century were keeping the Sabbath. He said to me, what are the sources you have that prove the early Christians were keeping the Sabbath? And outside of the Bible text, which I could cite him, texts in the Bible that should illustrate that. I had sources beyond that that I lost when my computer, uh, for all intents and purposes, it had some really bad problems and I had to, I had to take it into a technician and I had to change my browser and when I changed my browser it wiped everything that I had bookmarked on the other browser that I couldn't get back and I don't know where those documents are now. I go through a lot of documents but I don't have the first problem with him calling me out and saying where is this? Where is the proof for this? Because I don't expect anybody to believe me, uh, to follow along with me, to give me the benefit of the doubt. Test me. Test what I say. Test how I behave how I do things. Track me through social media. See the contents of, uh, of my commentary over the years. Um, people change in time. It's, it's called sanctification. People ought to anyways. And for the better, those who say that they've been saved and are, are filled with the Spirit of Christ. And that is the biblical terminology that the Father has sent the Spirit of His Son to dwell in us. So I know I'm looking at the clock and I 
<clears throat> I see that I've gone I see that I've gone an hour and nine minutes so far. But I just don't believe that I've expressed everything that I want to express about this subject because I don't often talk about this subject. So right now I'm going to. And I, I'm gonna take a short break and then when I come back, I, I think I'd just like to go through um what has been my experience with Flat Earth since summer of 2015, things that I've noticed, and maybe some musings about all of this and things that are happening right now. For those of you who are my listeners who have a, a similar opinion concerning the Earth that, that I do, and for those of you who don't that uh, believe the Earth is a, a moving ball, uh, I'm not here to patronize you. I'm not here to call anybody uh, globe tards, flat tards, that whole thing kind of thing it it should be a a discussion that is open and people should be willing to have their side their views their theories criticized on both sides and from within any particular side that's the only way that you usually get to the truth so let me get this break out of the way and then uh, I'll be right back and it'll seem like no time has passed at all so I'm gonna go down my experiences thus far with Flat Earth, its characters, its community, and its ideas. And I may just have to pick this video up in, in like a, a part two, because it's a lot. It, uh, as I said, this was going to be a bit extemporaneous. And what I did before I started making this video is I wrote down a lot of names. Names that have been around from the start. And things I've noticed about them, for better or for worse. This isn't necessarily an indictment on anyone. Maybe in some ways it'll indict certain information. I'm not too sure yet. As I said, it's extemporaneous. And now the first person that I heard any kind of significant material from was Eric Dubay. Is Eric Dubay an agent of some sort is he in on a rollout or whatever <clears throat> that I cannot say that definitively for sure cuz I don't know I know what I've seen I know what I've heard I know what I've experienced and here's what it is first thing is he often inserted in the talks he did because he got on all kinds of, of different sort of, uh, in air quotes, independent uh, media shows and platforms, just as Mark Sargent did, uh, from early on. And he got a lot of exposure early on. These kinds of things, I'm afraid, let's just say this, that there's a term that I've come to learn in the last few years called astroturfing. Astroturfing, for anybody who doesn't know, is where certain entities decide that they are going to roll out an idea or a movement in a way where they tweak <clears throat> numbers and other information to make something look like it is a organic, anorganic, grassroots movement when in fact it is not it is being contrived that's astroturfing now he was getting all kinds of uh exposure early on i did some some looking into him with the limited time that i have and i can tell you that i've read uh some of the leading works that most early flat earth proponents were pulling from Eric Dubay and his monologue is taken heavily, very, very heavily, from Samuel Robotham's work, Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe. Heavily from that. As is, as I said, many of the early proponents, the very popular proponents and voices in the Flat Earth. I tracked Dubay, I tracked his videos, dates when they were released, uh, social media, 
uh, tweets and things like that, and he's all over the board until about the time uh, that and he that he self publishes these two books, the Atlantean conspiracy and the flat Earth conspiracy. He even inserts, as does Mark Sargent, this meme, this title, Flat Earth, as opposed to stationary plane or whatever else. Now, the thing is, you have to remember, for the longest time, even since I was a child, this idea of Flat Earth, the Earth being flat, is synonymous with backwards stupidity. And yet they use that very term, as opposed to stationary plane or any other term that they could. They, people like Eric Dubay and Mark Sargent and, and Jaronism, and others, others like Patricia Steer, flat earth, and other hot potatoes. Flat water, flat earth. You see. They chose that name, they chose that, that title, and that, that moniker, that meme, and stuck it right on this. So, Dubay, even in his tweets, was kind of all over the board, very much supporting Alex Jones for some time, by the way. You can look into him. Is he organic? I don't know. <clears throat> if he is, and he is who he says he is, I think he's a bit unstable, maybe flaky. In the fall of 2015, I decided to join Eifers because he had promoted it as being a more authentic um, website and resource for these ideas than the Flat Earth Society, which is clearly obviously meant to make those who question the the nature and the shape of the earth it's meant to make them look absurd now i joined ifers and within 24 hours i was blocked from ifers why do you suppose that would be I'm not the only one. Plenty of people have said that happened to them. For the most part, the people who said that happened to them, I have tracked them over time because they also have YouTube channels and are content creators. And these same people are usually the people who are creating content that is original, original thinking, that clearly show that they're not being controlled by anybody. They've got low subscriber counts, they've got low views, low likes. Is that because they're not smart or entertaining? Is that because what they have to say is not important? I'm going to say, no, that's, that's not why. Because uh, these people are, are very smart. And whoever's backing some of these people, of course, are they have control of social media. They have control of the web. They can tweak the numbers in any way they want. And, you know, people tend to be very sheepish. They tend to go along with the herd. I'm afraid that's the truth. <clears throat> so I did notice in most of Dubay's interviews that he couldn't just talk about the flat earth, could he? No, he had to interject all kinds of new agey Hindu uh, ideas and philosophies and all that. Um, and now some of you can say, well, that's just his personal belief system. Okay, fine. Yes, I have a belief system too, and that is that the Bible is true, that it was written by the only true God through his servants, the prophets, and the apostles, and that the Bible is far more than a religious book. 
It is a book written by and for the servants and the children of the living God. So yes, I do have a belief system also. That's true. And maybe a lot of people can't separate the two. Um, those people uh, out there who profess Christianity and believe that the earth is a stationary plane, they don't hold back with talking about the two things together. And I'm actually going to get to that because there are a lot of problems in there as well. One of the serious issues is going to be the fact that those people who operate on the platform of what is pure, uh, provable, empirical science, uh, they're going to take anyone's religious beliefs and they're going to be able to use those things as a way to weaken their argument and spin things. That's going to happen. So again, these are just observations. And then, of course, not long after that, um, Eric Dubé, you know, and I'm going to be careful about how I say this because, again, it's, it's possible that he's a real authentic person and, and is who he says he is. If that's the case, he is an unstable person. Do any of you remember that there is a picture of him floating around where he's making the uh, OK sign in the, in the picture, that 666 sign? The funny thing is, is a lot of these people who are the biggest names from, from early on, let's say 2015, okay, early 2015, that's when everything kind of started popping like popcorn. Uh, there exists at least one image of all of these people in some kind of occultic pose or regalia of some kind. Have you guys noticed that? It's the case with Matt Boylan. Come on, man. He did that video with the orange 33 shirt and all those hand signs he was making and everything. Come on, man. Seriously? The interview that Mark Sargent did with Sasha goes by Orphan Red, where he's making the hand pyramid, the whole sign. Same thing that Trump did uh, through uh, some of his interviews. Is it just coincidence? <clears throat> well, what you got to do is you got to take all of the material and evidence you have and add it all together and see what you can make of it. On the other hand, Eric Dubé, if he is actually who he says he is, just some guy who happens to live in Thailand and, and practice Wing Chun, and who knows if he has an actual job or not, and has self-published these books, wherein, by the way, there's not really much original content. Everything in these books can pretty much be tracked back to another author. And that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes, here's the deal, if truth is truth is truth, it, you're you're just gonna if you if you write about the same topic as somebody else who wrote about it before you you're gonna be kind of covering the same ground because if the truth is the truth is the truth it's unavoidable I get it that's true but I do need to point that out secondly I do gotta tell you between Eric Dubé and Mark Sargent in particular, and there's others. I have to tell you, if these guys are actually who they say they are, and their story is real and organic, these two guys are some of the best speakers I've heard in a long time. I, I can't speak uh, nearly as well as them. And, and certainly not in a, an impromptu interview. I mean, it... <laughs> I don't know how many of you have tried it, but it is not as easy as one might think. Um, especially somebody like me who has all kinds of sinus problems in the morning. <laughs> and you'll forgive me. Uh, so then next, who did I hear from next? Well, uh, it just so happens that at this 
time that uh, Eric Dubé was releasing all these interviews that he had on the different podcasts and whatnot, um, Mark Sargent started releasing his clues, and it was a whole series of clues. Now, he obviously did clues in Windows Movie Maker, and for somebody who has the the gaming background that he does, I would think that he would be working with far uh, more superior software. Now, did were these videos made in Movie Maker to make them seem more organic, to make him seem more like a regular Joe uh, than he actually was? I don't know. I guess you're going to have to make up your mind on that. But the story where he says that he made this series of clues all, I don't know, it must have been, what did he say? He says like within a week or something like that, like every day, it just, he would he would get up and man, it would just flow to him and, and he would make these videos. And uh, if that's the case, then those are some of the best impromptu videos I've ever even heard of and the thing is most of us know that that sort of thing happening like that it just doesn't happen very often and what a coincidence that two people who are that well spoken should be releasing this this big bulk of material right around the same time both pushing the AE map both pushing the name flat earth mark more than Eric pushing the dome and the Truman show and uh, that that snow globe design all right now and I'm sorry my my furnace is running because it's not far away from me and I can't get away from that I can't do anything about that so I'm, I'm sorry I hope that doesn't come through too bad that it's not too much of a distraction so then speaking of snow globes and that whole meme and inserting this as an idea and the AE map as an idea and the name flat earth which is associated with stupidity as an idea now consider Rob Skiba before Rob Skiba started producing videos about Flat Earth, he was pushing, among other things, uh, a book that he had written about um, the Antichrist as a singular futurist figure being the Nimrod of old, Babylon Rising. Rob Skiba is one of the first names I was thinking of when I did my video quite literally wrong. How someone can continue to say that they are avidly, sincerely studying the Bible and yet they are not wavering on some of the theories that he has? <clears throat> well, I just don't know. I don't know how that's possible. I don't know how he's not seeing all kinds of things that should be very big problems for him and these theories that he espoused in Babylon Rising and a lot of his rhetoric before that and after that between that and Flat Earth. And he's never retracted any of that. He still continues to push that, that meme. And I'm sure that book sales and the money from book sales has nothing to do with it and he pushes the Truman Show snow globe round earth <clears throat> he even went as far as to create a model and describe it as Yahweh's terrarium what are we Rob 
Are we a bunch of fish and lizards and insects crawling around inside Yahweh's terrarium? I think it was poor taste in choosing a name like that. But that's just my opinion, isn't it? <clears throat> right around this time was the Morgyle. And now I still don't really have much bad to say about the Morgyle. I thought most of the videos that he produced, especially early on, were pretty thoughtful videos. And he focused as much as possible on the actual physics of whether or not the Earth is moving. And I thought a lot of them were, were pretty good. Uh, he, of course, uh, got involved before long with globe busters I have my own set of problems with Jaron Campanella do I or do I not like globe busters sometimes it's not often I can sit through an entire show it was that same way with what was the show called flat earth conspiracy with Lori Frary and Lawrence Wright Lori Frary being one of the early people to produce a video wherein she recorded a large ship exiting Tampa Bay. And I used to live by Tampa Bay. It's a big bay. She recorded it go out of sight and zoomed in. And she showed how the water itself will cause effects upon the hull of the ship that'll make it start disappearing. You get the ship far enough away to where the human eye cannot zoom in on it and those effects from the water will cause the whole thing to disappear. A number of people have actually illustrated this, the fact that there is miraging that happens over the surface of water. Jaron Campanella has showed this, Rob Skiba has showed this. Now, Keep in mind, some of these people, when I bring up things about them that I see as perhaps negatives, don't think that I think that everything that they produced was negative or that was supposed to lead us to some kind of bad conclusion. I don't think that at all. And here's the deal. If a lot of these people that I'm talking about are people that you know or are aware of in the, in air quotes, flat earth community, the thing is none of these people would have any credit within the air quotes flat earth community if they weren't getting at least some things right on the money part of what would give them credibility if it's a rollout and if there's a lot of people in on this rollout or are taking orders in some way they're going to have to provide certain nuggets of really excellent information it's what gives them credit and I would suggest whether or not you want to put in the kind of time that it would take to look into these people and their background and if they say who they really are or anything like that keep this in mind that pretty much every single one of them are going to have in their arsenal certain bits of hard truth and it's going to take separating the chicken from the bones so then there's Jaronism Jaron Campanella Mr. Bait and Switch now a good question would be why would I call him Mr. Bait and Switch I'm gonna explain that In his earlier videos, in which I honestly thought it was Topher Grace making videos under another name, but that's besides the point, he would make a whole lot of statements about um, how these people like Brian Cox and, and the other popular uh, people pushing the popular model and, and staunch evolutionists and whatnot, that they would make disparaging remarks against Christians 
and he came off as being somehow the champion and defender of Christians, Christendom, and Christianity, only to find out as time went by that he was one of the biggest detractors of Christianity and Christendom. Jaron Campanella grew up, so he says, Roman Catholic and went to a Jesuit school. A Jesuit high school, anyways. And now, whether or not his beliefs and how he's expressed himself is organic, he definitely is, is mixing up in the minds of a whole lot of people the difference there's a, and there is a huge gulf and a huge difference between what is really Christianity and I'm not talking about Protestantism evangelicalism or any denomination in contrast to Roman Catholicism I'm, I'm talking about true Christianity people that truly believe the Bible people that have truly been made alive and regenerated by the Spirit of Christ and Roman Catholicism as a system, a belief system, and a practice, there's a huge gulf between the two. So obviously he's either uh, confusing those two things, or he's purposely confusing those things to confuse people. Again, you build a, a false system, uh, a fake system, uh, an incorrect narrative, and then you yourself knock it down it's kind of not a new thing people been doing that for a long time and so then we have so many other names some of them who I really honestly think have have produced a lot of very good observations some people that I think have done very good experiments uh, one of which I forgot to even write down. Uh, I know his first name is John, and he did a video called A Mountain of Evidence. All you'd have to do is punch in a mountain of evidence. Uh, there was the laser test that Dr. Zach and a group of friends did over in Europe. There was the laser test. Jaron Campanella did a laser test early on. A number of people have done conclusive tests to show that there, quite simply, there's no measurable curvature. Things are, are not dipping away from us as they absolutely must on a globe. There's some very smart channels out there, and there are people that are thinking out of the box. Not everybody backs up the AE map and those people who do there are a small handful of them that are doing it based on what I would say is is a lot of good observation good science and good astronomy Although there are certain problems that have to be addressed, like the fact that there are absolutely no arcing shadows. None. And I think there would have to be when you consider how much sky, how many mile, miles of sky uh, the sun would have to travel based on daylight times in any given location and you can set up a stick and you can see that there is no arcing shadows that's problematic no matter if you have an apparent sun or not no matter how much diffraction could be going on based on the atmosphere and I do think there's diffraction that's going on in the atmosphere absolutely the atmosphere is a gas I do believe that there's lensing that happens in the atmosphere, and it's why the sun grows. Sure, absolutely, but you don't have arcing shadows, and that's a problem. You've got angles that the sun is being observed from in, in, in all kinds of, of, of different latitudes, and that's a serious problem. I don't think anybody should close their mind 
to one map being correct or not. I, I even think Lawrence Wright has shown that, um, that the sun and moon cycles can work very good on a sinusoidal map. Obviously, guys like Free Energy have shown how it can work on a map that's basically twice as wide as it is tall. And I think there may be a lot more to be said about that than you think. And now answer me this. Why is it that when people like Wright and Frary and Free Energy and Mike Helmick, uh, among others, started saying that based on all observation, provable observation, this round map and circular sun just can't work. We're either looking at a globe or we're looking at some sort of either rectangular or in the case of sinusoidal somewhat diamond-like shape wherein the sun and the moon travel over it in a sort of uh, straight line path now, of course, <clears throat> yeah, immediately you've got this problem, I guess, if you want to count it as a problem, where you can either have plane flights or boat trips that either go um, east to west from, say, Santiago to Australia, can continue westward, to South Africa and continue westward back to South America. And you can do the same thing in the other direction. And initially people would say that's a real problem if we don't have a circular map. Well, a number of people have offered theories of space loop. Now, what I find amazing is, as soon as some people started talking about these theories of space loops, immediately, by people specifically like Jaron Campanella and Globebusters and some others, treated it like a stupid joke. Now, was Lori Freire and Lawrence Wright working with guys like Globusters, Jaron Campanella, <clears throat> and um, Bob, I don't know his last name, in order that, and here's the thing, and this happens a lot, it happens enough to where you have to consider, is this what happened in this circumstance? To take something that may well actually be the right model and to make sure that the people who present it are very abrasive and act very childish like Lawrence and Lori were during that whole time they were presenting this idea <clears throat> just so that a couple of other people who are set up to make that look ridiculous can do so I haven't known from the start when people were offering that as a viable model why it had to be shot down with such incredulity. If anybody affirms that either the infinitely powerful and wise God of the Bible could create this place by speaking it out of nothing, or if you don't believe that and you believe <clears throat> just higher beings design this place, look around you. Look around you. Look at the elements around you. Look at the creatures around you. Look at the world you live in. Look at its, it in its entire spectacularity. Look at the complexity of a cell. DNA strands. And then, after you've thought about that for quite some time, you get back to me and you tell me that creating a seamless loop of space around what is the boundaries of Earth just isn't possible.
I understand that it's difficult for some people to, to wrap their head around that. And that's fine. Have any of you ever considered that maybe the reason that a lot of people believe that the earth is a globe is not because all of these people are in on a conspiracy. Although, yeah, I'm absolutely convinced that plenty of people at the top are. Plenty of the people at the top have far more information about this place than uh, your average professor and author and scientist. But consider this. Are all of these various scientists just mindless tools, robots, automatons of the system? Or have they made enough observations of a world that was designed in a way that were you to wrap this world around a globe, it would work because it works in a way where there is seamless transition coordinated around the limits of it so that when you exit, if you want to call it that, certain coordinates, not only do you see the coordinates of where the earth begins in front of you, but you enter those coordinates as you exit the others, as if you're looking at, just for the sake of argument, a Gall Peters rectangular map, and you leave the map in the lower right hand corner, traveling at a perfect due easterly direction. Not only would you see what is at the very west extremity of the map, but you would enter seamlessly as you sail, travel from the one side to the other. But no, that's silly. That's ridiculous. We can't even entertain that argument. Now, that sounds exactly, exactly to me like the rhetoric of people like Hendrickson who said, we can't even entertain the idea or the argument that the seven churches at the beginning of Revelation is talking to seven distinct subsequent church ages throughout this dispensation of time. It's just like the people like Anatoly Fomenko, who no, I don't trust, not at all, nor his theories, who in the introduction to his book History, Fact or Fiction, completely dismisses the theories of actual historians like Herbert Illig as just beyond argument. Dismissal should be a big clue. Perhaps the reason that so many people out there who believe the earth is a globe believe it is because all of the evidence that they've been able to observe around them tells them that everything around them and the way the place works is like a globe. The big problem is water always seeks its level. Water always seeks its level. You can't show in any experiment that it doesn't. Water always seeks its level. That's why there's water level. And there's no provable curvature to the earth. Absolutely none. Nor is there provable movement of the earth. Zero. Don't listen to this nonsense. Like what Einstein has to say about light. We know so little about light. The honest people, like Eric Dollard. Sure, he's a drunk. Everybody's got problems, don't they? 
and I didn't mean to say it that coarsely, like I'm looking down on them. I'm not. I'm not. That in fact, that that would be something that people would would use to discredit him. Because he's he's a brilliant guy, and he'll tell you. We don't know what the sun is or what it's doing. He'll tell you it's a transformer. He thinks that it's a transformer from probably another dimension that's simply transforming energy from an unknown source and emitting it here. He's not a flat earther. I do like something that Dell from Beyond the Imaginary Curve has been saying from the start. He's been telling people, let's keep it to the things we can prove. Let's stop trying to push models that absolutely cannot be proven because we're building false narratives we're building people up who don't have the time to do the kinds of serious research that the other side has time for they've put a lot of time into this they're very very well equipped and prepared he's been telling people keep it at what we can prove and there's things we can prove simply the earth has no curvature for those of you who send me photos of what seems like curvature let's say like over lake Pontchartrain, there's a real problem with just simple images the fact is it can be shown through simple experiments uh, how atmosphere distorts what we're seeing at a distance and the various ways that optical illusions can distort the things that we are viewing. Now, I'll tell you something else. I wish Rory Cooper would come back with my perspective. Those were some of the best videos from the perspective of somebody who is an artist who is just observing light and simple motion. <sighs> I miss that channel. I really do. So I don't I don't know that I'm going to continue this. I've I've made nearly a 2-hour video. And I don't know what I've accomplished. I I hope for for any of you who have put your stock into this idea, into this theory that the Earth is a stationary plane, won't allow these things to sap your energy or curb your enthusiasm. And uh, I hope that, that those of you who so far have been on the fence or still believe the Earth is a globe will consider just keeping your mind open as information comes down the pike. Is it a rollout? It's hard to say. But I do know that when they don't want good information coming to people, they see these things coming down the pike and they're going to get in front of it, and they're going to control the narrative, folks. That's what they do. And there were good, smart, flat-earth channels that were around for years before Eric Dubay and Mark Sargent and Jaronism and Globebusters and Flat Earth Conspiracy and all these others showed up. And I admit, the boom of it all produced a lot more channels channels that they just didn't some of them didn't even want to stick with it because they were tired they were sick of the flack they were getting 
because you know as soon as the rollout was in place all the trolls were in place too everything was in place and the people that were offering pretty good information really really got harassed so much they decided it's just not worth it it's not worth it this is making my life hell Fran Anderson she made very good videos at the start she really did she's not doing it anymore um, Lawrence Wright had the first public presentation I remember being over at uh, New Horizons St. Anne's allegedly Dave Dave Murphy D Murphy 25 really excellent stuff right until he went into the whole urine drinking and kill Whitey thing and I, I don't know about the urine drinking thing I know that I'm definitely against Kill Whitey. Um, and then, man, I've watched it. And I've watched the people who have sort of taken over it. And it's a mess. Pinecone Utopia. The guy who runs it, he did a couple early on. And then he got involved with this goofball, supposedly ex-NASA guy. Goofball! I made one video critiquing this guy in his crazy theology. The Mandela effect. Come on. Research Royal Rife. Two videos. Chocked full of good stuff. Uh, Rob Durham all of the stuff that he showed uh, using AutoCAD simulations fantastic Dr. Zach um, AJC1844 you learn a lot from that channel he does currently um, support the AE map you know, at one time or another, just about everybody supported the AE round map. And you know what? The book's not closed on it. Because there's a whole lot about nature and our world that we don't understand. Okay. <clears throat> Why can one person stand on the beach and have a ray of light from the sun come directly to them? And another person stand 50 feet away. And that person cannot see that ray of light going from the sun to that person. They can only see a ray of light going from the sun to them. As Antonio Subarets brought up, and I've heard others bring up, why are all rainbows seen only from a perpendicular point of view? I'd love to hear these questions answered. I personally would love to be part of at least putting my two cents in sometimes, trying to get to answers, good, solid answers. I honestly would love to see a whole lot less of these channels continually pushing Flat Earth Live, Flat Earth 24-7 Live, watch such and such brush his teeth mark Sargent throws a ball against the wall for two hours on flat earth live 24 7 coverage uh we're going to be having hangouts today and we're going to have hangouts tomorrow and the next day and for the foreseeable future we're all going to love each other we're all going to get along nonsense i'd like to see a whole lot less of that i would like to see a whole lot less of the ridiculous meaningless pointless don't get anywhere social aspects the control of this thing that is worth pursuing and turning it into a farce <clears throat> Fouquet word 
he still is a EMAP and he has a lot of really good information. So there's a lot of people out there and <laughs> I've I haven't even mentioned a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there that have good information. You should watch Dell from Beyond the Ima Imaginary Curve go out on the street and talk to people. You see how people can be talked to. Now, if I saw Dell uh, coming towards me and wanting to talk to me about a given subject, and I'm a, a pretty good size guy myself, I'm and pretty strong. I can take care of myself. But I would definitely hear him out. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt that he holds himself well and commands a certain amount of uh, respect and authority when you're going out there on the street. And this is something that, that Jake Gibson also did. And that's really great because that keeps us connected to one another. Not just some imaginary, fantasy, abstract world of social media and groupthink and people able to control what we perceive as reality through the numbers, through this screen, and through this programming. People, we got to start having relationships with one another again. I think that that's vital. It's vitally important to not abandon those for the instant gratification of social media. And I'm not going to keep going. Because if I keep going, I, I don't know. It's probably not going to be productive. This is two hours in. This is two hours in. And for all of you who have kept with me the whole time, I thank you. <clears throat> I appreciate you. Um, thanks for letting me air this out. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to come back to you with. Uh, I don't. But I know that I can't keep pushing something that I know is full of, of a lot of um, subtle errors. Like um, William Hendrickson's work is. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, I know that I'm just about done with YouTube, their policies, the way they act and everything. And, um so a lot of things have been put on the back burners, uh, like wanting to do interviews. That's that's on the back burner. A lot of it's on the back burner because I know for a fact that I, I need to make some kind of change because YouTube are totalitarian uh, monsters that absolutely are practicing digital book burning. And not good books. There are good books to burn. Absolutely. Get all your pornography and witchcraft together. Go ahead and burn it. Like they did in Acts. I'm all about that, 100%. Don't mind saying it. Anyways, <laughs> I've got a wrap or else I can just keep, you know, talking. So uh, thanks thanks again, everybody. Uh, I do hope everybody is, is really blessed. Uh, I honestly do. And um, I, have, I have a lot of faith in my God and, and in my Lord. And um, I've got a lot of hope. And that includes you people. That includes this world and where it ultimately has to end up. So uh, keep that in mind and keep loving the truth because it will love you back. Take care.